This episode contains swearing and adult themes and the occasional consumption of alcohol. Um, so if you don't like words like <laughs> then um, do us a favour. And Pete's going to be getting blasted. What? On the booze. We have loads of alcohol here. Are you just going to, you're going to mainly read the, are you preparing yourself? Yeah, I am. Okay. Are you not nervous? No, we've done it before. <laughs> yeah, but we're in a bigger studio now. All right. We have our fucking shit up there. Yeah. Okay, we need to go. <laughs> okay, all right, sorry. Okay. We have a drinks trolley. I have a drinks trolley. You have a, you have a drinks trolley. I, I bought that from home as well. That's worrying. <laughs> Wheeled it all the way here from, from um, jail. Well, <laughs> I'm not actually, I've never actually been to jail. You, you are aware of that. Yeah, I've been to jail. <sighs> okay. You don't need to do deep breaths, Sam. Come on. Okay. Big gulp. We're back. Seamless. Seamless. <laughs> Seamless. No, no, I can do this take... probably. I can do this probably. Uh, right. Can you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Don't make me nervous. I'll fucking get on with it, Sam. I've got fucking shit to do. Okay. Welcome to Staying Relevant, the podcast of Sam Thompson and Pete Wicks. We're back, baby. They said we'd never be back, and we are. I genuinely don't know how. Season two. We're not calling it a season now, though, are we? Are we not? I, I don't think so. Because I think it says on the sheet we're calling it a season two. You don't have to read everything that's on the sheet. Though. Okay, fair It's just sort of a guideline. That's All how right. this works. It's not a script. We've got mics, by the way, for everyone listening. I know. We had them in the last series. Yeah, but we've now got mics that lean across us. Right. And we're sat on a sofa now. We're not in a studio studio. We, I mean, we're sort of supposed to tell people why they should listen and we've got mics that sit across from us. is probably not a good one. Well, I just, for me, this is a really big moment. Oh, I um, thought we were going to do this. Here okay. we go. This is a big moment. We came from nothing. We started whoa, from the bottom. Whoa, 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 whoa. We started from the whoa, bottom. Whoa, now whoa, whoa, whoa. When what? we say we came from nothing, I genuinely did. You came from lots of money. <laughs> You went to boarding school. You had a butler. You had a nanny. Um, I didn't have a nanny. Oh, I did, actually. Nanny Karen. Yeah. It, your mum's also called Karen. Weird thing. No, no. Um, no slightly yeah. odd. Mummy Karen and nanny Karen. <laughs> no. I bet that was confusing for your dad. <laughs> you you had a nanny. In Where are you going with that one? <laughs> yeah. Carry on. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. Um, Got a bit red, Sam. A bit nervous. Ooh. I'm a bit nervous. So, but this is a big moment for us. We've started from the bottom. Now we're here. Uh, that's a Drake song. And um, we we have a studio now. Uh, for the listeners who aren't watching, we have a studio. We, have a... we had a studio before. Yeah. And now we have lights. We have lights, we have cameras, and we have a huge thing behind us with staying relevant, uh, like, imprinted behind our heads. Yeah. Which, Sorry for people that are watching this on YouTube who can quite clearly see what he's fucking describing. But we do, and we're really proud of it. And thank you to all of our diehard listeners, of which we know there are many. Please stop saying diehard listeners because it's making me sort of it's making me feel a bit sick. No, I don't even care. I'm going on one now. We have fans. We have fans and we and, and we're going on tour. We have mics that we can hold. And like, you know You can't hold it. I'm holding it right now. But it's attached. We had this before. We're just in a new place. That's it. It's the same shit, just in a new place. <laughs> With more budget. And on that note, welcome to Staying Relevant. With Pete, Pete Wicks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know. How have we got worse? <laughs> I don't know. It's because... It's got worse. That's a 15-minute intro. It's worse, Sam. <laughs> Ready? <coughs> Welcome to Staying Relevant, the podcast with Sam Thompson. And We've just done that. <laughs> and We've Pete done Wicks. the intro. Move on. There's a bit there that says opening conversation. We've only got 10 minutes for this, so fucking hurry up. Okay, right. So, Pete, how do you feel with being back? Fine. <laughs> do you feel good about being back here? Yeah, I feel fine, yeah. And it, we, we were gone for quite a long time. and um, About six weeks. We've gone for six weeks. How do you feel about how you've maintained relevance in that time, Pete? We need an update. We need... Uh, a breakdown of what's been going on in your well, life. Well, listen, we stopped because it was Christmas um, and because all this shit was happening. Um, now we're back. All this shit has happened. I spent most of Christmas drunk uh, and don't remember a lot of the past six weeks. He hates Christmas, by the way, for anyone listening. And New Year. New Year's worse. 
No year, no me. You know, you're going to be the same prick you were the year before. Did you make so... any resolutions? No. What's the point? I'll I made three. Did. Yeah. Oh, fuck me. Go on. Okay, so I want to read a book at five in the morning every morning. I want to have a cold right. shower. So, so hold on. Let's, let's start on the first okay. one. Read a new book at five in the morning every morning. Yeah. Yeah. How many times have you done that in January? Quite a few. Sam? Yeah. How many times have you done that in January? Like five. Sam? Yeah. How many times have you done that in January? <laughs> Like five. You haven't done it. I haven't done it. I haven't done it. All right. Next but one. I, shower, cold shower every morning. Okay, so you, you, one of your resolutions is to wash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but in a cold... I haven't been doing that for the past 30 years, no? In a cold shower. Right. And uh, another one was yoga. Yeah, I'm now I'm what? now actively looking for a yoga instructor oh, for one-to-one okay. -one yoga lessons. Excellent. You're actively looking. What are you looking for from this yoga instructor? Someone who can bend... And bend me, to that be honest. doesn't sound it like you're looking for a yoga instructor, I'll be honest with you. Well, okay, what are yours? I don't have any, I said that. Why? Because I'm going to be the same fucking knob that I was the year before. It's, I, I, it's just ingrained in me now to be a fucking knob, so I might as well just get on with it until I die. <laughs> Which is going to be when? I won't make it a 40. <laughs> And bear in mind, Pete's 36 now. 34. It goes up a year <laughs> every time you tell everyone my age. <laughs> Pre we call him prehistoric Pete. No, we don't. We did that once because I've just had to do your fucking radio show, which is the new thing for you. I'm surprised you've not mentioned it yet. Well, that's a nice segue into it, actually. There, there we go, yeah. So, what have you been doing to stay relevant, Sam? So, I have a new radio Brace show. Brace yourselves. So, I have a new radio show. It's called uh, Hits UK. And uh, it's every evening, Monday to Thursday, 7pm till 10pm. Yeah, this isn't a, 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 like an opportunity for you to plug your own show. Okay, well, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, he so, does a radio show. Yeah, and uh, it's very serious. Well, it's not serious. but Well, like... it's definitely not serious because I've just interviewed for it. And one of the questions were, if you were a dinosaur, what would you be? <laughs> and I've got my own, I've got my own sort of uh, like name and stuff on the background on screen. You have. You've got a similar thing to this with a picture. I went into the studio today and noticed that um, the picture Sam is smiling. Um, that sort of gormless thing he does. And he's got food in his teeth. Yeah, that is really annoying. That's really annoying. Basically, yeah. they took a Knew photo. he had a photo shoot. He's got a shirt on that looks like he was ironed with a brick. Not great. It's silk, though. So It's not silk. I know where it's from. Where's it from? Top man. It is. Good, good guess. Well played. I like you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have food in my teeth. I did the photo shoot, and no one wanted to tell me that on the one image they were going to use for, you know, the billboards, the ones on buses... The the like all the the advertising that I'm around. Nice everywhere. way to let people know how big time you are. <laughs> yeah. All the billboards, the uh, ads on buses, and you know all the other things that you've done. Um, maybe one of your New Year's resolutions should have been to brush your teeth. <laughs> Although I'm actually not. On you've a added billboard. washing. You're not on a billboard. <laughs> no, no. Buses so you just either. added that in. No buses, all billboards. <laughs> and I, you know, I was going to run with it, and I went. You know, people are going to call me out. I'm on no buses <laughs> and on no billboards. Right. Okay. Um, Anything else you've done? Because there's another big project that you've been working uh, on. Yeah, so I am also the uh, podcast host of Love Island in the Morning After. I don't know why I've suddenly got really professional. So yeah. I'm the podcast host of Love Island in the Morning After. And um, I also appear on Love Island After Sun every Sunday alongside uh, Maya Jammer and India Polak. So moving on from them, um, I've got some big news. Here we go, baby. Pete's got a child. It's um, no. Um, you uh, quit smoking. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> your your tag that you had to wear because you were on probation has come off? Uh, no. It's still on. Still curfew. You're off the booze. Oh, no. Right. No. Um, I've left Towie. Oh, my God. I didn't want to bring it up first, but I already knew that. Well, uh, everyone did. It was in the paper, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was. How do you feel? Um, fine. No, but how do you really feel? Like fine. You spent a lot of years at Towie. Yeah, I've been there a long time, yeah. Was it because no one wanted to film with you? Because we've obviously gone through that before. Did you run out of cast members to film with you? No, I just think I am... Um, oh, Sorry. I'm glad we're carrying on from last time where you can't control your fucking bodily functions just for an hour on a podcast. I'll tell you what's embarrassing, actually, about filming this in your workplace yeah. is that since we've walked in and when we walked in earlier on, Sam says hello to everyone as if he knows them all. Hi, guys. All right. How you doing, John? They don't know him. No, no idea. There is a He's guy He's walking around. Up. Hi. How you doing? All right? Yeah. It's honestly, it, it's making me, it's cringy. Because you're in my there house now, many, Pete. The, I mean, you're, you're in house. my house. 
I'm in your house. You're in my house now, Pete. We went to get the lift and instead took the stairs because there was a few people and someone went, get the, get, getting your steps in and Sam went, oh, you know, you know me. <laughs> and the guy looked at him like, no, I don't. That did actually happen. It literally just happened. <laughs> you know, you just said some awkward response. But you know it's like the water, water cooler chat. You know, and you know, it's like, oh, get your steps in, mate. And you're like, oh, these stairs will get you, though, won't they? All right. Anyway, I think we've done the opening conversation of 10 minutes. No, 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 we haven't spoken about Tower yet. Well, no, because we're coming back to that. Are we, are we circling back? Well, it's the sh I don't know if you were with our producer before we started this show, where we discussed. This is why I've got notes, oh, you see. Water. Yeah, that'll help. This is why I've got notes. <clears throat> we're going to try and stick to the format, right? Yeah, it's always better when you lead it. Which is what I'm doing now. Okay. So shut the fuck up and move on to the next bit. Okay. All right? Yeah. So, Sam, what have you done this week to stay relevant? That was fucking seamless. Okay. So, um, well, I've done a few things. Uh, I did I did After Sun, my first ever After Sun. No, I said staying relevant. Okay. What have you done to stay relevant? I've done After Sun with my Jammer. Thank you very much. Right. Of okay. which my name is also there too. Well, you say that. <clears throat> you say that because I saw a great article in the Daily Mail this week about After Sun's ratings. Yeah. Mate, okay. Yeah. It's all about that. Uh, amazing. Ratings were great. They were. Um, uh, and they said, thanks to Maya Jammer, your name wasn't even in the article. Maya in India, breath of fresh air. It's almost like you're not there. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, mate. What are you doing? <laughs> it is tough. I'm going to be honest with you because they know each other really well, I think. And also, they're likeable. Wait, there's also there's also another thing. So, um, Maya. Fucking come on. So basically, we did the announcement for Love Island. And, they did the uh, announcement. They did yeah. the announcement for Love you Island. You did your own trailer for it. And uh, <laughs> You did your own trailer and didn't get mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that is true. ITV basically did their own Love Island trailer uh, for After Sun. And um, I just wanted to sort of like ram it down people's throats a little bit that I was doing it. So I was like, come on. And then I basically was like, I'm doing it. And 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 that did all right, to be fair. And uh, <clears throat> then when the when the announcement came out, uh, me and India were sat next to each other. And she goes, oh, my God, Maya's just commented on, <laughs> under my photo. Maya doesn't even follow you. And... <laughs> You know that, don't you? You host a show together and she doesn't even follow you on Instagram. <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Sam? It's fine. Is it? Yeah. It doesn't look fine. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. You don't look fine. It's pretty tough. And what's made it worse is that now... It's too far gone. It's too far gone. But also now, because we've mentioned it, if she does follow you, she's done it just because she feels awkward. <laughs> You host a whole show together. Mate, you, don't, you don't really host, do you? I mean, you're, no, I you're, do. I do host. I no, am a co-host. That's what they say in the thing. Sam Thompson co-host. I'll be honest, yeah. Don't say that in the Daily Mail. <laughs> yeah. She hosts. You're a panel. Yeah, yeah, we're on the panel. Yeah, but I call it co-hosting. What, what you call it and what it is are two different things. <laughs> All right, you're on the panel um, to give your opinions. I, just, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to seem really beggy by this, and I think I probably will. But India is Why like... Why change your habit of a lifetime? India, India turns around and goes, oh my God, so oh, my, Maya's commented underneath her photo. That's so nice of her, of the announcement. And we both done the exact same announcement. And Maya was like, let's go to the announcement. As if like, let's go on, let's have this. And so I looked, I went, oh, this is great. Like, I better have a look at mine. I look at my announcement, nothing. And I was like, okay, well, that's fine. I'm, I'm sure she follows me. Nothing. <laughs> and then, further down the line, she, she, she even tagged me in something. But still doesn't follow you. Still doesn't follow me. No. But it's no. gone so far that, like, we're so deep into it now that I don't think I can go up to him and be like, would you mind? Would you mind? It would mean a lot if you, if you could follow me. Well, you can't really do that with anyone without sounding like a fucking desperado. Um, I would really like it. Why? Why would it matter to you if she followed you? Because it's Maya Jammer. Yeah. Why would it matter really to you if she cool. followed you? Is it? Yeah. What, someone following you? <laughs> no. This is, this is the prime example of why we do this podcast, because people don't realise how unbelievably pathetic <laughs> and desperate you are to be part of this industry. <laughs> that it would be really cool if my Gemma followed me. Why? What benefit has that got to you? <laughs> that was a really good point. I, I need to play it cooler. J not cooler, just play it cool to start with. Okay, There's yeah. no cooler. You're not even at cool. That's where you're so at. So you wouldn't go up and be like, well, should we follow each other? No. No? No. Okay, Why well. would I? What would you do? Nothing, because I don't <laughs> care. I mean, it really, it makes no difference. So anyway, so you've done that. Um, you've done something else as well. What have I done? Quite big. Sam absolutely ruined an interview with Brad Pitt this week. I didn't ruin it. That's not fair. It actually went really well. 
did it. Yeah. I mean, the only good part was the manager, you managed to get in a room with him. He hated you. <laughs> no, he didn't. He, he looked didn't at you me. with the same contempt that I do, where he thought, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> no, he didn't. He was just, he was, he was confused, but only because I came in charging. Well, not really. You came in as if he was your headmaster. Hello, Mr. Pitt. Oh, you watched it. Pete watched it. Pete watched the interview, which is lovely. Of course I did. I would not miss that complete car crash. And um, and I walked in and I wanted to make him feel comfortable. And so... Well, I you fouled there. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to make him nervous. I didn't want him to feel like he was like nervous. You didn't, in an interview. You, sorry. Sorry. What? Your fucking ego dictates, right, that you thought you coming into a room might make Brad Pitt nervous. <laughs> Oh, God, no, it's not Sam Thompson. Is that Sam Thompson? Is that the you can guy? <laughs> no, you can't do that. Oh, I can. You can. Um, oh, no. <laughs> well, yeah, look, I wanted... I just so wanted, you just wanted to... You know, I wanted the room to settle. Yeah. So I went in Yeah, and people were so excited that you were there. It's understandable. And I, and I said, you know what, we're going to break the ice here. And I saw that he was actually wearing a pair, a fine pair of Chelsea boots himself. And um, so I went, oh, we're both wearing Chelsea boots. And, oh, then, fuck. And, and, then, and then he went, yeah, we are. And I was like, that means we're like brothers. And he went, well, I'm pretty sure that quite a few people in the world wear Chelsea boots. And it didn't fully land. And well, I knew that it didn't fully it land. It never took off. No, but Let like, alone fucking land. No, but that, that, you know, when you go in, you go, I'm going to break some ice here. And then it didn't break. If anything, it got even more ice. And I was like, oh, no. Well, yeah, because then you followed it up with, I like your ring. Yeah. Which if you just listen to that as a sound clip, sounds weird. Um, but what was the point in that? Just complimenting. Because he had a massive fat ring on him. And I was like, and I was like, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> and then I wanted to basically compliment him. So I bought, I wanted to really... If you really just tuned in and you've just heard Brad Pitt's got a massive fat ring on him... <laughs> That's not as bad as what the interview actually was. <laughs> no, it's because I wanted to make him feel like I was complimenting him. I wanted him to feel complimented. It's the art of interviewing, Pete. And... <laughs> Fuck me. Well, that's something you should learn then. Because I'll be honest with you, mate, there's only so long that you can go being awkward and weird before you actually have to have a talent for interviewing people. You are so socially awkward, it makes me feel awkward. I get secondhand awkwardness. <laughs> I watch it and go, Oof. It Honestly, it made me shiver. But then again, yes, it didn't get much better, actually, because then I was trying to sort of save it. He hurried you. Yeah, he did hurry me. He, he hurried he, me. He motioned. I know. Get on with it. Yeah, it's because I couldn't get my poem out, because I was reading him a poem. Well, you wasn't, were you? I was reading him a Taylor Swift song. There we go. So I was trying to do a TikTok prank on him. <laughs> yeah. And it, yeah, and it didn't work, it didn't land, because he actually called the song. But then, also, I tried to bring it back to the movie, and I was like, it almost makes me miss the 1920s. <laughs> and then I just realised that I wasn't alive in the 1920s, and I was like, that was a fucking weird thing to say. And then, and, like, then, and then you went with vocabulary that you don't use. Which is what? To be fair, to be fair, Brad. First name terms there, you and him. Brad, to yeah. be fair, Brad, it's a banger. <laughs> Do you know why? Do you know why? It's because I was interviewing him for the radio show, and I sometimes say that tunes are bangers. It's the lingo. It's the lingo. Yeah, yeah. Like when I went into your studio earlier and you went, put the cans on, Pete. <laughs> headphones, mate. Just go with headphones. It's fine. So you have actually been quite relevant this week. I mean, you failed. <laughs> I've been doing stuff. You've been doing stuff. You're getting opportunities. It's just a shame you're fucking them all up. I would consider Brad Pitt then to be success. a... Um, well, no, not a success at all, really. It was a fucking catastrophe. But not your worst. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Miles Teller? Miles Teller. <laughs> Miles Teller. I forgot I, mean, I told you about people, that. Well, people that don't, was a while ago, People by don't the way. know about this because we've obviously had, you know, a little Christmas um, interlude. Yeah, but by the way, this is a while ago. This yeah. is like recently. I've yeah, now this was a while ago. It's, it's now sort of the well, end. You want me to tell a story? Fuck yeah. All right, fine. So I um, I just done a interview with... Um, with the cast of Fantastic Beasts, actually, and it went really, really well. And I Why has your voice changed? And I think I'm trying to explain... Why does your voice change when you're talking about my work? <laughs> so I'd recently just done an interview um, <laughs> with the cast of Fantastic Beasts, actually, um, and it was so great. Uh, why just talk right, about it like you? Right, so I fucking... No, do it like that you. Fucking... All right, so... I did a really nice interview. Put your interview. hands down. What are you waving in a plane? All right. So I, did a, down. so I did a really nice interview with um with the cast of Fantastic Beasts and it put it went on my Instagram and then uh we did something with Paramount actually, didn't we, Pete? Where Yeah, uh, we did, yeah. yeah. And um 
they actually asked me whether that I wanted... That fucking awful name drop, by the way. We yeah. did something with Paramount. And they basically uh, got in touch and they were we like... We went to go ape with Paramount. <laughs> That's what we did. I, I, he's made that sound like we, you know, we've just been working Paramount. We went, we went go eight. <laughs> Carry on. And Pete hated <laughs> you hated the heights, and Pete was so bummed out. And he, <laughs> Sam, you are aware. Sam, can, can I just? I just want to point this. Sam does this all the time because he doesn't know what to say, so he tries to get his own back. No, the video is on. <laughs> The fucking Instagram. It's not that you hated the height, so it's that you were hung over. Oh, I was and, so hung and over. Pete, and Pete didn't want to be hoisted into the air. And he was wearing like a jock strap or whatever they whatever they A harness. A harness. He was wearing a jock strap harness. Just a harness, he, Sam. A jock strap doesn't need to be put Sam was also wearing a harness. We were wearing harnesses. And he was and he was getting hoisted into the air. He had his arms just by his by his side, getting hoisted up. And then they put us on this really high treehouse. And then I got really scared because I don't like heights. And so I was shaking and Pete was just sat with his legs dangling off this treehouse. I was fucking hanging out. Livid. They were like, Pete, can you can you say your lie? And Pete was, Pete was just sat there going, What was he fucking saying? I'm not saying my fucking line. <laughs> oh, it was just it was a lot. So as you can tell, Pete But yeah, we worked with Paramount. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As you can tell, Pete didn't get asked to interview Mars. <laughs> uh, but I did. Well, you, you got asked to, yeah. How did it go? So so I turned up. For anyone who hasn't done um, a press junket before, I... Uh, Which I imagine <laughs> is most of the audience. All right, fine. Well, you never know. And um, Oh, no, sorry. I forgot you think you're so big time that people in the industry listen to this for tips. <laughs> Carry on. And so basically, if you do, if you do junkets, it's like... The fact that you're using all these terms now makes me die. You did in an interview. We did, you know, I was doing the junk kit for Paramount. Pete, I'm big I had time. the cans on. I'm big, uh, time, big time now, Pete. All you're right. a big time fucking cock. <laughs> so anyway, I turn up. It's exactly what you think about from Notting Hill. It's like the horse and hound moment where they're all sat in these fucking hotel rooms. And they're like, the hotel rooms are really, really small. Mm. And there's a load of wankers in there, basically. And everyone's like doesn't want anyone to know their questions so everyone sort of like stands in different corners of the room which makes me laugh actually because genuinely or generally they always ask the same question yeah exactly which i found really weird because i was like oh isn't everyone going in with the same thing? did you have your own special questions i had i spent the whole me and zara um went through miles teller's career actually because that's who we were interviewing um, and we wrote down some questions, but like no one talks to each other, and everyone's really like quite up themselves, and uh, and and so like it was just like filming Chelsea again, was it? No, yeah, <laughs> and, and basically everyone sort of started different things, being like, so who, wh what publication are you with? And so you've got to say who you're with, and you're like, oh, I'm here with X, Y, and Z, and then you they usher you. What did you say? I'm, I'm here with my own Instagram. It was actually, that's exactly what I said. Oh, fuck. I think it's before I got the radio show. So I literally went in and I was like, this is just for my gram. And they were like, okay. And so they sat me down and I was quite uncomfortable. And you know what I'm like, Pete, when I'm nervous, I get like quite chatty and I'm sort of like, wee, I'm quite up. And wee? Yeah, I, I, I'm sort of like quite up. You sweating? Um, no, yeah. And Which one is it? No, or yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sweating. Okay. And um, so I'm sort of like trying to make people laugh and I'm, you know, just sort of like, being quite a big presence in the room because I think I felt just quite insecure that I'd never done any of these chats before. And um, I basically then got called in round the corner. It went, Sam Thompson. And I turned around to someone I was talking to and went, I'm up. I was like, wish me luck. <laughs> I imagine they probably got that when your name was called. And he was like, he was, he was like, good luck, mate. Because I was telling everyone how like I hadn't really done this before. And I was like, that's me. And I walked in and um, she left the door open and really loudly in front of everybody else, went, I'm really sorry, but um, we can't have you interviewing Miles Teller. I was like, what? Why, why is that? And she went, he doesn't want to be interviewed by you. <laughs> and I'm looking at this fucking open door. I'm like, oh, everyone can hear outside. And I've just been giving it Billy Big Bollocks down there, being like, wow, what are you asking? Like, These are my questions. And then she goes, he doesn't want to be interviewed. I went, Why? And she was like, because his agency have done like some research. <laughs> and looked, his agency have done some research and they've seen you dressed as a fucking Godzilla on your Instagram twerking and actually think Miles Teller doesn't want to be a part of that. And I went, it, and I was like, no, it's absolutely fine. Don't, you know, like you, there's nothing you can say. She went, is there anything like you want to do? And I was like, it's absolutely fine. Don't worry. It's cool. And I, I walked out 
Called and me then, and genuinely, Sam called me straight from the interview and then she went, mate, I just don't know what. I just don't think it's ever going to happen. <laughs> That's literally the conversation that was happening. And I went, what? And he went, Miles Teller obviously knows who I am <laughs> and doesn't want me to interview him. I found that quite funny. <laughs> Um, when I was when I was leaving the room, the guy that I said, "Oh, it's me," went, "Sorry to hear that." <laughs> oh, the pity! And I literally didn't even I just didn't even see him there. I just carried on walking out the room, and then I was like, "I was." It was really tough. It was really tough. Yeah, you were down for a couple of days after that. Yeah, because because at that point you think, "Well, am I any good at my job?" And listen, you know, but how things have moved on. Yeah. You've done Brad Pitt, and you're still no good at your job. So nice. You've done a lot. Pete, what have you done to stay relevant in, um, this, in this tricky little industry of ours? I wouldn't say I've done anything to stay relevant in the industry. I've done something this week to make a difference. Well, go on then. Enlighten us, please. I was at Parliament this week. Oh, fucking hell. I had to do a speech at Parliament to a uh, number of MPs. About Juvie and the, and the working conditions in there. No. And not. how they don't serve enough meals in the cafeteria. <laughs> No. Um, it was, listen, I do loads of animal stuff, don't I? So it was about Fur Free Britain and I did all that sort of stuff. So I did that this week. So actually, it might not be relevant in this industry, but for once, and unlike you, trying to use a platform to do some good. Oh God, you know, I, I fucking hate you. You're such a wanker. Like, you actually are. Like, it's the kind of thing where it's like, I now sound like a complete knob. And you've turned around and been like, well, I've just done something for animals. Um, and it's I'll, like, no. I'll tell you what was awkward, though. So, so I had to do this speech. Um, uh, and I, I had all this speech uh, wrote out. And it was about a time I went to um, Finland and saw some horrendous animal conditions and all that sort of stuff. I can't even take the piss out of that. Um, like, anyway. I've literally got a nod and be like, yeah. Tough. Um, it's hard, that. So, so I'm doing this speech about the, the, the conditions and the suffering that these animals go through and all that sort of stuff. Um, but the problem is, is when I got there, um, I, I went to the toilet and I rubbed my eye and I, I rubbed my contacts out of my eye. So oh, I, no, you didn't. You wanted to look like you'd been crying, didn't you? So you came no, back no, no, onto no. the little podium no, and went... I couldn't see. Oh, you couldn't see. So I rubbed it out, so I had to read the speech one-eyed. Because I, I could, because I couldn't see. So I'm reading this speech out uh, and all these people listening to it and I kept losing where I was on the page. So I was tr just trying to blag it whilst looking up, winking at everyone, which was really fucking awkward. Then afterwards, um, the head of... Um, oh, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to. Um, so the head of the... <laughs> lovely lady, she came up and she went, honestly, um, thank you so much for speaking today. Um, you know, it was horrendous to hear about you know, the fur farms and all that sort of stuff. Um, but honestly, Joe, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes! Did you correct her? No. You Did you go with Joe? Yeah, I just went with it because I thought, I can't, this is now awkward. She obviously has no fucking idea. This is really, really awkward. She went, um, you know, we've got some great food here. I wonder if you could um, just speak to a couple of people that we have press, like BBC and all that sort of shit. Um, and I said, yeah, and she went, also, love what you did in lockdown. What did you do? What did you do in lockdown? What were you meant to have done in lockdown? Nothing, but Joe Wicks did the whole fucking wake oh, up. Oh, it's Joe but... Wicks? Yes. Oh, no. She it was fucking Joe Wicks. And then she, and then, well, you are Pete Wicks from Towie, though. Yes, but I'm not Joe Wicks from, look at me, I'm doing a star jump, am I? <laughs> That's so good. You did, did you, did you go, it's for the kids? I, I, I just sort of went, thanks so much. <laughs> for the kids. Um, Anyway, and then I got ushered outside um, uh, to do this uh, interview for BBC. You know when you see the, the BBC interview things and all the political ones, it's always in the same park outside House of yeah. Parliament. Yeah. So I'm over there. As we were leaving uh, House of Parliament, I, I, because we'd come outside and I was still in the grounds, but I was outside, I lit up a fag and got manhandled really? by the security <laughs> for lighting a fag. Um, so I had the, the uh, report the lady from BBC watching me get manhandled out and then having to do an interview with me. So, yeah, not particularly relevant. I think that's very relevant. Joe Wicks on the animal trail. Yeah, I mean, interesting, interesting day. Interesting people. It was a lot like Towie, actually, because that's a, another place full of fucking snakes and shit storylines. Oh, hello. He's not over it. He's not over it, listeners. And I think that brings us very nicely into the sidebar of shame. Or as I like to call it, the sidebar side side of shame. It's going to have a jingle. Yeah, I mean, when you say that's what I like to call it, you've just said it the same but in a different voice, haven't yeah. you? So It's a jingle. Sidebar of shame. So, Towie, let's... Talk 
That's how we... Why are you saying it like that? Because that's how everyone fucking talks. I don't think it is. In fucking tower, you melt, feed that pony. Feed it. <laughs> I don't actually know what it means, but... <laughs> yeah, go on then. So, Pete Wicks, a.k.a. Pete the Pirate, has finally left Towie. Essex's Lothario and Hardman, Pete Wicks, has finally left the game. The girls are crying, the kids are screaming, and the grandmas are rejoicing. No, actually, they're the ones that are crying. The, gra- the nans are in tears. Mm. The girls are in floods. Yeah, no, so I've left. The, the headlines this week were dramatic. Lock up your daughters. Shock. Um, uh, Despair. Th- there was uh, despair, yeah. Love rat, Pete Wick. Love rat. Love rat as well. Um, Not love dolphin, love rat. Love dolphin? Well, I don't know. It's just like a beautiful animal, isn't it? What? It's just a beautiful creature, dolphin. But you're being called a love rat. Do you see what I mean? No. Okay, fine. Carry on. Um, huge blow. Is that what it's a huge blow to ITV B? Yeah. <laughs> huge blow to mega series that is Towie. <laughs> what? Well, uh, listen, listen. In all in all fairness, <laughs> it was around before any of the other reality shows. Oh, hello, he's got be- he's got protective it. Well, uh, I'm just saying before all of the other reality shows that you're obsessed with. Well, luckily for you, Pete, I actually <laughs> I have the statement right here. So I think the listener really would like to hear exactly what you said. Um, just wanted to let you all know this is on Pete's Instagram, by the way, uh, to his fans, <laughs> to the fans. Th- th- this was a real um, an issue for me as well because when you do these statement things, you have to write a statement, and that is a lot different to my original one. I'm going to be honest with you, because I hate ever saying fans um, because, and I actually cut off the top part of that because it was initially addressed to Good all fans. the. To my loyal fans. Oh, no. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really have any fans. I've just got a lot of people. Only that... fans is what you have. Um, so, yeah, there's some phrasing in there that isn't. Well, let me let me explain and let the listener be the judge. Just wanted to let you all know that time has come for me to take a step back from Towie as a regular cast member. Dot, dot, dot. The show has been a massive part of my life for such a long time and has opened many doors for me in my career. So Pete still seems to think he has a career. Which is which? Which is nice, staying relevant. I'm going to be honest with you. Management told me to put that one in. <laughs> <laughs> As my diary... Co- oh, hello. Someone's busy. Someone's outgrown Towie. As my diary continues to fill up with my other work commitments being... Being... Management told me to put that in. <laughs> my other work commitments. It only makes sense for me to step back from filming Towie full time. This is the good bit. I wanted to say thank you to everyone at Lime and ITV who have worked with me on the show over the past eight years, through the ups and the downs and everything in between. One thing remains the same, Towie and the people connected to the show are all my family. As much as I'm excited to move into the next chapter of my life, I will sincerely miss filming every day with the cast and crew. Now, that's a fucking lie, because you've turned up no. to the podcast and been like, I don't know why I'm still doing it. Yes, but it's only you part... You hate every single person on there. We can be honest about this yes, now. Yes, oh, we can. So it's only a part liar, because as you well know, I love all the crew. That is very true, actually. I, yeah. All the camera guys, all the guys, they're, they're the people that I love being he there for. He just hates the cast. I love being there for all of them. I've worked with them so many years, and so have we on different things, because a lot of people on TV and the small camera guys, world, they yeah. work, yeah, it's a very small world, and they're fucking great. They Make are some great. great friends. The, the crew, amazing. Well, you did say cast and crew. I, yeah. I know. Management told me to say that. Yeah, right, okay. And lastly, and this is the real, this got me in the feels bit. Lastly, I just want to say thank you to you the fans of the show for your support and putting up with having to see my face on your screens every week. Don't stress though, because they were clearly stressing. Mm. Don't stress though. You may see me pop up every now and then. I'll always be part of the Towie highly dysfunctional family. Yours sincerely, Peter James Wicks. There's no yours sincerely on the end of it, but yeah. Now there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. First of all, unfortunately we're out of time. First of all, are you going back? And this, then why a, did you say you might be going back? Because if there's a reason or or there's something special What would the to reason do? be? Okay, what would get Pete Wicks back on Towie? Oh. Give me a scenario right now. Death. 
So, no. Uh, yeah, listen, you don't know. It's, it's the same as anything. Like, it, uh, town is a massive, um, or has been quite a big part of my life, hasn't it? I will, Eight years. Yeah. I will, so, so I do. I, I owe a lot to to the show. So, if they if there was something that worked out and there was. By the way, you're on you staying know, relevant. You're not being interviewed on like you know the Daily Mail online. No, but that's the, but that's the, that's the truth. Like it has been a massive. I wouldn't be doing a lot of the stuff that I do now if I hadn't of started on tail with them years ago a lot like you you would still be living off your dad if you hadn't have been um <laughs> louise thompson's brother on chelsea um so it, it opens the gates or, or the doors for us to, to do other things haven't it so, See, that so as true. much so as much as yeah I, I haven't enjoyed um the majority of the bitching and all the fucking other shit that comes with it the I, cheating that you did yeah I, I, yeah I, the Megan about, mckenna stuff yeah exactly it was around the, the Ellen ray wire stuff yeah the it, chloe sims stuff yeah, it was around the same time that you kept getting dumped. As much as all of that stuff is a lot of drama and it's quite nice to come away from that being your reality, I, I, listen, we both do. We we owe, and, and this is a staying relevant thing, we owe those shows... <laughs> for, our, for, our, for our less than average careers yeah. that we've got now. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but that's true though, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So, so it's not like a big... Yeah, listen, I don't want to be filming it anymore. I'm too old to be filming it. Thank um, God. I that's don't... what we've really been waiting for. You're too old to be on it. Yeah. There we go. Basically, but... but... It has. It was the the kind of catalyst to, to all this other stuff. Same as Chelsea was for you, mate. Do you know what? I would actually agree with that. You know, we this is staying relevant. We talk about our depressing journey to mediocrity in this industry, and uh, I, I actually think the most relevant we've ever been was when we first started on those shows. Well, no, because I was Louise Thompson's little brother who was just a bit weird with a gap tooth. Yeah, and now you're well. Yeah, exactly. And now you're Pee Wix's mate. So um, actually, <laughs> so actually, I think we've got worse. We've tried harder and got worse. It's, re it's I don't. It's really difficult, isn't it? So Pete's agent lovingly um, told us that, and I think she actually said this as a compliment. She said that we were the cockroaches of this industry. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually agree with her. Yeah, she's not wrong. Yeah, we were, we, we. She said we would survive nuclear winter in this industry, and that we would still be there, clinging on, never quite making it, but always there. Um, if you actually uh, listen, I'm going to do it because I thought you were going to do it, but uh, evidently you don't do enough research. I, uh, you know what Daily Mail's like. Yeah. So you want to hear some of the comments from people after the. Towie leaving announcement. I'm so... Is this Daily Mail comments? Of course it is. Yes! So, obviously, the Daily Mail shock. Pete Wicks leaves Towie. Huge blow. This was after the source says, slightly older. Oh, that's a bit harsh. He doesn't look a day over 63. <laughs> yes! Your career, what the fuck does that mean? He'll be doing the rounds and reality shows, just like that loser Joey Essex. Joey's actually done quite well. About time. He's old enough to be the other cast member's dad. Other TV projects <laughs> probably means selling them in curries. <laughs> um, it's time for a proper job now. Grow up. Well, this is the problem because you can't ever go back, can you really? Well, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a good one. He's a nobody who thinks he's somebody because he has long hair. That is what makes me a man and a real person is that I have hair. Um, never seen the show, but that is much of a loss. <laughs> One of my favourites. The best one that I think we've got from this is... He's a pervert anyway. Thank you for listening to Staying Relevant with Pete Whitton. You haven't even said that that's it for the show. Oh, no, oh right, yeah. You're just reading straight... Basically, we've run out of time now because we waffled on <laughs> about fucking pointless crap. Now we're going. <laughs> now we're off. So this is the outro. Ta-da. Okay, thank you for... Ta-da. Ta-da. No, it's not ta-da. I'm not a fucking magician. Okay, right. Th what should I... What should my outro be? Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you for listening to Staying Relevant with Pete Wicks and Sam Thompson. We are back and we are back for good, baby. Yeehaws all round. That was fucking god awful. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back every week now. You can follow us on Instagram as well, where you'll be able to get all the little clips and all the funny bits of him being a prat uh, at Staying Relevant Podcast. It's the first time he's ever called me funny. I'm happy with it. To be honest, we're back. We're back, baby. We're back. We're here to take over the Switch fucking the world. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna take over the world. We're okay, we're not pinky in the brain. St Stephen Fuck Bartlett. Me. All right, I'm see you later. Um, oh, all right, ready? Subscribe. Why have you said it in that voice? Because I'm going to subscribe when you go to YouTube. Oh right. Okay.
subscribe to the new YouTube channel, which is Staying Relevant Podcast. Yep, for the full video of this episode, it goes live every single Friday. And that is by popular demand. And make sure you subscribe and follow and rate and review on all platforms for the podcast. You can also follow us on Instagram at Staying Relevant Podcast. Don't know why you would, because it's shit. Well, no, it's not, because we were at number one at one point. Uh, we were at number one at one point. We're currently not even in the top. We're not in the top charts. That's because we haven't been on yet for a while. So if you want to get us on, then get us on. Well, they're not getting us on. We already are on. They just have to... Get rate. us on your speakers. That's the whole point of them rate and review and... And do review. And rate. And rate. Stars. <laughs>